Where do we go from here? Uh, we continue doing our job. I treat everybody fairly and equally, and I expect no less. Cartoons in the Clarion News. Good evening. It's Wednesday, April 24, 2002. I'm Pat Grace. And I'm Jackie Nealon. County commissioners reacted today with the events at yesterday's county commissioners meeting, where Commissioner Butch Campbell said he probably will not run for another term as county commissioner. Campbell's announcement comes as a result of critical editorials and editorial cartoons published in the Clarion News. Probably, as it stands today, I will not run for the job. Uh, contrary to the opinion of one of the local editors of the paper, I don't have to expose my family or myself to personal pot shots in the name of political humor or under the shroud of journalism. Um, I don't need to be exposed to this. And I don't need this paper. And now that my dogs are housebroken, neither do they. <laughs> That was Commissioner Campbell's announcement at yesterday's commissioner's meeting when he was asked if he would be running for county commissioner next term. Campbell's decision didn't, however, come as a huge surprise to Commissioner Donna Hartle or Commissioner David Seifert. If anything, I think uh, both myself and Commissioner Seifert were a little bit shocked. Uh, but then again, uh, I don't think we were so shocked that uh, we kind of figured this was coming. Uh, all three of us have... Uh, had some difficult times uh, in some of the different projects, and especially when the news media hammers you to the point where uh, a lot of times the three of us will just sit there and throw our hands up and just look at one another and say, you know, why are we doing this to ourselves? Commissioner Campbell explained his reasons why he probably wouldn't be running for county commissioner yeah, in the next election. It is. Apparently the uh, Clarion News has decided that anything that goes on from the courthouse has a negative twist to it. Uh, and I just uh, got tired of my family and myself being put to that abuse. And said, if, if that's the kind of thing that being a county commissioner is all about, then I probably don't need it. TV5 placed a call to Clarion News Editor-in-Chief Rodney Sherman yesterday, but received no comment. Sherman did say, however, to look in Thursday morning's editorial page of the Clarion News. Be sure to tune in to TV5 News again tomorrow night for more on this story. The Clarion Area Authority is planning on making a $500,000 a year effort to keep rainwater from getting in the sewer line. During heavy rains, the amount of water is too large and plants cannot handle the volume. Therefore, the untreated sewer water must be released in the Clarion River. In a 2000 project, much like this one was cr carried out in the Chestnut Street area and gr the Greenville Avenue area in 2001. The CAA system manager, Jim Gorley, says local funds will be needed for the project. The work so far has reduced the problem but hasn't yet ended it. Tomorrow will be Clarence University's 10th annual Bring Your Daughter to Work Day. The university has scheduled several, several events for the children who attend. The program will take place in P Pierce Planetarium. It will give the kids a chance to look at the stars, and the women's head soccer coach will give the kids an opportunity to play a friendly game. The program starts at 8.45 a.m. and will last until 2. Tomorrow is the beginning of some special events. The Special Olympics are making their way to Clarion. The festivities will kick off bright and early tomorrow morning with a torch run starting at the Clarion Courthouse. The Special Olympics Committee is looking for volunteers. If you want to volunteer, call Randy Redding at 226-553-5553. This morning, President Bush saluted a retired Army colonel from Southern California who took up a second career as a teacher. Teacher of the Year, Chauncey, that, the, excuse me, Chauncey Beach was honored today at a special ceremony in the White House Rose Garden. Mr. Bush said good teachers have a lifelong impact on their students. After 22 years in the military, Chauncey Veach went to work as a substitute teacher. He spent the next three years earning his teaching credentials at night and on weekends. He now teaches high school social studies in Thermal, California. 
Veach will be out of the classroom for a year to work with other teachers around the country. Yesterday, Clearfield County Commissioners approved a child safety program tagged Operation Code Kid. This program will establish a 24-hour emergency notification system for children with the Clarion County 911 Emergency Center. It will allow emergency personnel to call three emergency numbers until someone is notified if a child is in an emergency situation or an accident. On April 17th, the Clarion Area School Board members approved the District Emergency Crisis Plan. Superintendent William Kaufman said the plan needed to be updated due to some missing, outdated, or incorrect information. The plan contains information about what to do in emergency situations. Also at the meeting, the board awarded vendor contracts for the 2002-2003 General Classroom Office and Art Supply, three vendor contracts for the 2002-2003 Custodial Supply bids, and approved the participation of elementary school in the Middle States Accreditation Program. Today was a special day for many people here in Clarion. Today was Secretary's Day, and one of those special people is right here in Becker Hall at Clarion University. The secretary here at the Communication Department helps us, out all, helps us all out every day. We here at TV5 would like to take this opportunity to thank Nancy Herringer for everything she has done for us. For, so, from everyone here at TV5, happy Secretary's Day, Nancy. And to all those hardworking secretaries out there, happy secretary, Secretary's Day. We hope you had a great day. Up next, TV5's very own Mark Despotakis will join us with some exercise tips. But first, it's your turn. Your turn to let us know what you think. Call or email us here at TV5 with your ideas. I create programming was brought to you by the Clarion Bull Arena, located on Route 322, one mile east of Clarion. Bull Arena offers rock and bull every Friday and Saturday night, and a game room with eight pool tables and arcade games. Bull Arena also offers bumper bowling for kids' birthdays and league play for adults. Call 764-3471. Again, that's 764-3471. What is a hero? Are heroes born, or are they made? In after-school programs, your kids will uncover hidden strengths, discover they have the power to change their future, and find the hero inside themselves. Let us know you on after-school programs in your area. Call 1-800-USA-LEARN. After-school programs, helping kids find the hero within. This portion of the programming was made possible through a grant by the Captain Loomis Hotel and Restaurant. The Captain Loomis Hotel and Restaurant is located at 540 Main Street in Clarion and offers dining as well as a nightclub. The restaurant and nightclub are open seven days a week for your convenience. Call the Captain Loomis Hotel and Restaurant, 226-8400. Library.gov. Log on, play around, learn something. You're watching TV5 with Zeta Tau Alpha. You're watching Clarion's very own TV5 News Live. Welcome back. Clarion University's Rec Center is a popular place. How many students in Clarion neighbors use it to get fit, but our question is, and our very own Mark Despotakis raised, do students really know what a proper workout is? Mark joins us now with the, his week-long series about working out. Thanks, Pat. We are in part two of the week-long series. I did want to learn what a good exercise routine would be for an average college student. 
So I went to the Student Rec Center to find out. Here's a look back at the exercises we learned yesterday and some new exercises in this workout. Here's a review of the parts of the workout Drew Wilburn at the Clarence University Rec Center designed for us. First, he said we should spend 20 to 30 minutes on a cardio warm-up. That could be anything from a walk outside to some time on the stationary bikes. Moving on to the weight room, Drew suggests doing the bench press at three sets of 10 reps each. The lat pull-down should also be done for three sets of 10 reps each. And concluding with what we showed you yesterday, the low row should be done for three sets of 10 reps each. Now we'll move on to some more exercises in our program. We start today with the seated shoulder press. This is another exercise where I strongly suggest that you have a spot. There's a uh, standing plate that gives you a spot as you stand, again, because this is something that is overhead. Starting off, again, grip about shoulder width apart, maybe a little bit more, depending upon what is comfortable for you. Notice there's these uh, pegs here across this floor. What you want to do is use those to push your hips, again, into the back of this. If you want to try and avoid getting your hips away from it, keep your hips and your shoulder blades pressed firmly against the seat back. Press up. This again is a mo uh, motion that comes in front of you, down to by your chest, and then up. Straight up above you. You always want to keep an eye on the bar as it comes down, keep your head up, looking up so you know where to press the bar up to. Drew talked about using a spotter while doing the shoulder press, but he thinks working out with someone else all the time is a good idea. Workout buddies are something I strongly, strongly recommend because it gives you someone to be accountable to. If it's just you, then, you know, let's say you like to get up and you decide, I'm going to get up in the morning first, a little bit early, go do my workout, and then go on with the rest of my day. If it's just you, when you hit that alarm in the morning, okay, you answer to you as to whether or not you're going in. Whereas if you know you're meeting someone here, you don't necessarily want to stand that person up, nor do they want to stand you up. Next, the standing barbell curls. Basically, for this exercise, grip, uh, underhand on the bar. Again, thumbs over or underneath, whichever your preference may be. Notice I just let my arms hang down. That's about how wide you're going to let the grip go. About elbow, like shoulder width, part. All you're going to do is you curl straight up, back down. The main thing to keep in mind for this exercise is to keep your uh, elbows isolated. In other words, don't move. You don't want to get this swinging motion. You want to keep your elbows pretty much in the same position. You want to make sure also that you come all the way down to, what they, again, what they call a dead hang. The tricep press down can be done using a variety of gripping apparatus, but Drew showed us the basics. Main thing here again, isolation of those elbows. Okay? What works best for most people, feet pressed the feet together in your stance, um, knees slightly bent, a little bit bent forward at your hips. Not necessarily rolling you back, just slight bend forward in, in your hips to get you to look forward. Okay? Keep your elbows in one position. You want to let the machine pull you up as far as you can your arms up in place without moving the elbow. Now what you're going to do, press it down. That's it. Again, keeping, it, keeping the movement nice and slow and controlled, keeping the elbows isolated. So those are the exercises uh, we have. We only have three more exercises to go. We will do those tomorrow. Jackie? So what can we expect from tomorrow's portion of the series? Well, we'll finish up the workout, recap the uh, six exercises we have done. Uh, and Drew says, just another reminder, that all, all of these exercises need to be done together three days a week. That's what we're creating. We just obviously don't have the time to put them all in one story on one night. So that's why we're breaking it up. OK. Thanks, Mark. On April 11th, Representative James Trafficant was convicted of taking taking bribes and kickbacks from businessmen and his own staff. He is seeking to overturn his conviction on corruption and bri bribery charges, saying a judge violated his rights by restricting testimony of his witnesses. He believes U.S. District Judge Leslie Wells prevented several of his witnesses from testifying because they were providing secondhand accounts or reporting statements made by others. The sentencing is set for June 27. A sense of relief was felt yesterday morning as word spread that Pennsylvania's May 21st primary election will be held as scheduled. A panel of judges changed their mind and agreed to allow congressional boundaries 
set for the state in January to be used for this year's election. New boundaries may be used for the 2004 elections. The court will review the new districts in a hearing on May 8th. The youngest king in the world is visiting the United States for the first time. At age 10, King Oya rules the kingdom of Tora in African country of Uganda. As Lori Highrose reports, he is spending the week in Denver in hopes of helping the country fight a deadly disease. Ten years old, but he gets a king's welcome. King Oyo presides over Toro, a kingdom of one million in southwest Uganda. On behalf of the children of Toro, I thank you very much. A Denver-based not-for-profit called Christ Aid brought the king here. They want to raise six million dollars to build the first children's hospital in Uganda. Uganda has the highest orphan rate in the world, with 1.3 million children losing their parents to AIDS. The World Health Organization reports 70% of the world's AIDS cases are in sub-Saharan Africa. Organizers say that's why the Denver mission is so important. Able to prepare a future generation of Uganda by equipping them with the right resources to identify and understand this uh, monster uh, called AIDS. We have. A training program here for physicians. To learn how to fight AIDS, the king, his mother, and the prime minister tour Denver's Children's Hospital. Learning how to yes. provide this kind of care. A 10-year-old king, that's, that's the best thing in the world. 19-year-old Lamar Davis has lupus. A visit from the king lifts his spirits. King Oyo breaks protocol to hug Lamar's mom. Thank you again. The king's mother says the children here touch her heart. There's no difference between you and me. In Denver, Lori Herosa reporting. Up next, Stephanie Dugan will join us with today's weather. But first, here's a look at tonight's stock report. Okay. <laughs> no, what are we doing? Nothing. Tim when I first got involved with drugs. I skipped school because, you know, nobody cared. When I first got pregnant, school was not important to me, so I dropped out. Well, if I don't finish school, then I can't go to college. I mean, that's the whole point of what I want to do with my life. I still need to go to school to make, make it for myself. I think I'm happier now. I know I'm happier now. This portion of the programming was made possible through a grant by Fox's Pizza Den. Fox's Pizza Den is located on Old Route 66 in Clarion and offers all-day delivery. Phone 226-5555. That's 226-5555. Fox's Pizza Den is open seven days a week for your convenience. Phone 226-5555. You know, we sing for millions of girls, but helping out in schools, that's the real deal, baby. I know our love can multiply. I'm the cute one, you know what I'm saying? Have you ever been backstage before? Cause you're the exit. I think you'll find that gravity is key in what I do. Once was one, but now we're two. I'm spinning out of <laughs> <laughs> This portion of the program was made possible through a grant from Clarion Hospital. Clarion Hospital is located off of Exit 9 of Interstate 80. Clarion Hospital offers outpatient services, transitional care, as well as an emergency room open around the clock every day of the year. More than 400 employees and 80 physicians work to serve the community. Call the Clarion Hospital at 226-9500. Clarion Hospital providing health care to Clarion County and surrounding communities since 1954.
Well, it's a little warmer today, Stephanie. How long can we expect this to stick around? We'll take a look at the map and find out. It's a typical spring day in Clarion today with blue skies and temperatures in the high 50s. If you take a look at the satellite map, Pennsylvania is clear of any cloud cover. This will hold true for the rest of the night. <laughs> it will look a bit different tomorrow morning. But just as the satellite map was clear, the same holds true for the front map. Pennsylvania and most of the northeast saw clear skies today with mild conditions as the temperatures range in the 50s and, <laughs> and 60s. But tomorrow morning won't be as pleasant. The front map for tomorrow is showing a high pressure system that will bring rain for tomorrow morning. But things will change by the afternoon with conditions clearing up with temperatures in the mid-50s. So for the next five days, Thursday, morning showers with a high of 54 and low of 34. Friday, mostly cloudy with a high of 56. And Saturday, showers in the afternoon with a high of 59. And showers again Sunday with a high of 68. And Monday, a high of 62. So it might be a couple rainy days, but then back to Monday looks like a pretty good day. Okay. Thanks, Steph. Thanks, Stephanie. Up north now to New York, there's a new building on the city skyline. So why does, why does it leave CNN's Jeannie Mose thinking about waistlines of, of, of all things? Here's Jeannie with the skinny on the latest architectural addition to the Big Apple. I couldn't. Mild scape. I think it's phenomenal. I, I think it's horrible. New York City skyscrapers are like its residents. They come in all sizes and shapes. So no wonder the champagne flowed One, two, three, four. at the dedication of a building 24 stories tall and 25 feet in width. 25 feet is the length of my living room. In an age when skinny is celebrated, the new kid on the block is the supermodel of skyscrapers. Is this the skinniest skyscraper in New York? Yeah, it's not the skyscraper. It's a, small, it's a small little tower. And he is its humble architect, Austrian-born Raymond Abraham. I love limitations. In this case, the limitation was the site, previously occupied by a townhouse owned by the Austrian government. The new tower is called the Austrian Cultural Forum, where they plan to showcase modern Austrian culture, not that old Sound of Music stuff. Me, a name I call myself. Far above the sidewalk, on the roof terrace, partygoers were surrounded by fatter towers. Will this be a famous building? It's a famous building already. One historian called it the most important modern architecture to be built in New York in four decades. The facade is really sort of sexy, like a, almost sexy. like, yeah, it's sort of like a stiletto heel. But I must admit, when you come inside, it feels very constrained. Not unlike wearing stilettos, at the opening reception, there was a lot of turning sideways to get by. There's also a little elevator we could use. All right, wherever you want to. But we don't fit. <laughs> but there's plenty of room for a library and a performance space <laughs> and a five-story apartment for the forum's director. At least you're a kind of skinny guy for this. Nice, yeah. The building's so skinny that the living room takes up one floor, the dining room another, the bedroom yet another. Well, whose office is it up there? That's the director's office, with the oddly shaped windows designed to frame the view. Sure, there are narrower buildings, for instance, this nine and a half foot wide townhouse in Greenwich Village, or parts of the Flatiron Building, but none so dramatic. I think it looks like a prison. It doesn't look happy. It looks like a guillotine. It's going to fall any moment. Well, now that you mention it, maybe there is a resemblance. That's why I said you wanted to cut above the rest. And if you don't like it, off with your head. Jeannie Mo, CNN, New York. Up next, Christina Stroni will join us with a look at sports. But first, here's a look at tonight's winning Pennsylvania lottery numbers. Talk, talk, talk. Talk, talk, talk. Here's Jerry. located in Drake Square Building in Oil City. Reese Brothers offers competitive hourly wage, plus daily bonuses, flexible scheduling, company sponsored health benefits, and paid professional training. Call today at 1-800-365-3500, extension 684, or 677-9236 for 
for your personal interview or stop by and visit the J Square building. Roof Brothers, where integrity and technology connect. Do you want complete coverage of local, state, national, and international news as it happens? Then tune in to Clarion's very own TV5 News Live for a complete coverage of the Clarion area in our world. TV5 News crews join with the crews from the world news leader CNN to provide complete coverage of the day's events. With advanced satellite capabilities, TV5 can bring you the latest news as it happens. So tune in every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday evenings for Clarion's very own TV5 News Live. Whether you're looking for formal attire or a Halloween costume, Town & Country Cleaners has it all. From tux rentals to costumes, stop by Town & Country Cleaners. Town & Country Cleaners has a wide variety of services to offer, including dry cleaning and spot removal. Located in Clarion Borough on Liberty Street, right next to the BFW, Town & Country Cleaners can handle all of your needs. To find out what Town & Country can do for you, call 226 Four seven eight one. Wardrobe for some TV5 News staff provided by Fashion Bugs located in the Clarion Mall. Whether you're looking for junior trendy or fashion for women, they have it all with many different styles. Fashion Bug also offers a wide selection of accessories. Fashion Bug is located in the Clarion Mall, just off exit 62 off Interstate 80. Open Monday through Saturday, 10 a.m. till 9 p.m. and Sunday from noon till 5. Christina Stroni now joins us with the sports report. In today's sports news, the Cincinnati Bengals didn't go after a quarterback in last weekend's draft, but they're hoping to pick up an experienced one this week. According to the Cincinnati Acquirer, Gus Farratt will visit the team today. Farratt, who is entering his ninth season, has played for Washington, Detroit, and Denver. John Kitna started for the Bengals last season throwing 12 touchdowns and 22 interceptions. And it's big news for Jerry West. According to the Memphis Commercial Appeal, the Lakers consultant Jerry West and the Memphis uh, Grizzlies have struck a deal from, for West to become the president of the basketball operations. The 63-year-old has been out of basketball since returning from the Lakers' front office nearly two years ago. In other news, Magic Johnson heads a list of 14 players and coaches nominated to the Basketball Hall of Fame. This is Johnson's first year he's eligible. The Hall of Fame is already planning to hold the ceremony in Los Angeles in June. Johnson spent 13 seasons with the Lakers, winning five championships. He left the league in 1991 after stunning the sports world with his announcement that he had the HIV virus. He had made a brief comeback during the 94 season. Also added to the Hall of Fame list is former basketball players Maurice Cheeks and Adrian Dentley. The Pirates battled the Dodgers on Tuesday night. Even though the weather was cold, that didn't stop the fans from entering PNC Park. The Pirate fans wanted a win, but in the end, the Pirates only only able to pull off six runs against the Dodgers. The final score was six to nine. That's tonight's sports news. Now back to Jackie and Pat. Thanks, Christina. You're welcome. That is the news for for tonight. Join Courtney Wilson and Susan Honored tomorrow night. But stay tuned. Up next is Sports Night. For everyone here at TV5, I'm Jackie Nealon. And I'm Pat Grace. Good night. Mm -hmm. Thank you.